Are you suffering with an L4, L5 disc bulge or disc herniation? Are you getting horrible back and leg pain? Today I'm going to talk about the severe signs and symptoms of an L4, L5 disc bulge or disc herniation and when you need emergency medical care for the severe signs and symptoms of an L4, L5 disc bulge or herniation. Now granted, this is a public service announcement. This is a rare occasion. However, you really need to know if you have severe signs or symptoms of an L4, L5 disc bulge and when to get emergency medical care. Also, listen to the very end of this video because I'm gonna talk about two solutions that I've used with thousands of patients over the last 30 years to help people stabilize their spine, eliminate pain, avoid spinal surgery so they could live stronger longer. Also, we're gonna cover some other exercises that will help guide you and help prevent the need for surgery. I'm Dr. Gregory Kramer. I'm a Livonia chiropractor here in Michigan. I've been practiced for over 30 years. I've seen over a couple hundred thousand office visits. I'm certified in corrective chiropractic by chiropractic biophysics, and I specialize in helping L4, L5 bulges and herniations, along with other degenerative spinal conditions, things like whiplash, migraine headaches, and a variety of other spinal problems. And I'm gonna show two specific ways that we help people with disc bulges and disc herniations, primarily uh, spinal decompression, targeted, very specific corrective exercise, and what we call corrective chiropractic. Corrective chiropractic means you actually, you measure the spine, you find out if the spine uh, deviates from normal, and then you would use personalized mirror image or opposite posture adjustments, mirror image corrective exercise, and mirror image or reverse uh, remodeling traction. We're applying pressure over time to reshape the spine to help take pressure off that disc. Now, if you like this information, please like it and share it. If you want more information, let me know what you're looking for. Also, please, uh, in the comment section, let me know that you subscribe to my channel and I'll personally respond to you. So the number one concern for emergency medical attention is when you have caught equina syndrome. What that means is there's severe pressure at the end of the spinal cord. Now it's not really the spinal cord once we get to the end. Very simple. This is lumbar five, the spinal cord's here. So right around five, four, three, two. So right around here, the spinal cord consists of a bunch of horse hairs, and they use the term cauda equina. So a bunch of little horse hairs, and, and that's the, uh, acronym, but in reality it's a bunch of little wires. And when there's pressure, severe pressure, there's a couple warning signs. One, we've talked about this in the past, is you cannot go to the bathroom. So even though you've drinking water, beer, wine, and you have not urinated in 24 hours, you need to get emergency medical attention for that. Uh, possibly you're going to need surgery. Number two, you have something called saddle paresthesia. Well, that means if you were to sit in a saddle, a horse saddle, uh, you would have numbness all along the inside of your thigh that would touch the saddle. And severe, I don't mean weakness, uh, a little bit of weakness, I mean severe weakness in the leg. So if any one of those signs, get to the emergency room ASAP. This is very rare, however, everyone should know that. Now what's happening, this is a spinal uh, MRI looking at from the side, what they call the sagittal view. Now this one's a little harder to see, this is like a bird's eye view. So this would be, if you look at the spine, you have the, the vertebrae, the disc, and these are the nerve roots. So if you took the spine like this, this is the vertebrae, okay? So this is the disc stacked on top of the vertebrae. Well, if this disc material goes right here, it hits the, the spinal cord or cauda equina. If the disc material bulges or herniates out to the side, that would be different. So if you only have one-sided problem, you could have a lateral herniation or a lateral bulge. And that could be severe pain or weakness on one side. That's not what I'm talking about. However, if you have a posterior, that means the herniation goes backwards, it can affect the, right here the cord or the remnants of the cord called the cauda equina. That's more dangerous and that's what can happen. So again, 
If you are having urgency, if you cannot go to the bathroom, if you cannot control your bowel or bladder, if you've got coffee stains in your underwear, get to the ER as fast as possible. Again, that's rare. Now, another thing I want to talk about is, so when you have pressure on, let's say, a nerve root, right about here, and, the, and there's pressure on that nerve, you can see the flickering light, that's usually a one-sided problem, okay? Now, you could have pain, weakness, you could have pins and needles down one side. If, again, you have pressure down, it affects the spinal cord, then that could be both sides. So if the pressure goes this way, it's affecting the cord. If the pressure is off to the side, then it would typically be one-sided, okay? Now, another sign of the ear getting worse. So let's say you apply some corrective approach. Let's say you're doing physical therapy. Let's say you're doing exercise. Let's say you're doing anything and your back and leg or back and arm pain is this far down your arm and leg, okay? And then afterwards, you're like this. This is a sign you are getting worse. As you can see, the further the pain goes down your arm or leg, this is worse. Now, one of our signs when we do any corrective care, either corrective chiropractic, spinal decompression, or all the above, we would expect people to have less pain and the pain would start to centralize. That's a sign of you are doing well. So again, if you have trouble going in the bathroom, you can't control your bowel or bladder, you got coffee signs, you got, you got saddle paresthesia or pins and needles right along the inside of your thighs that would sit on a saddle, get to the ER. However, that's very rare. Most of you are gonna have time, you're gonna have time to do some conservative care. And I would say 95% of you to be able to avoid surgery. And that's my goal. Everything I do is to eliminate pain, stabilize your spine, avoid spinal surgery so you can live stronger, longer, and go back to do the things you want to do. And again, the two methods that I use are one, spinal decompression. Now we've talked about that in the last video. And what spinal decompression does, it's a pumping mechanism. This is a picture of a vertebrae, a disc, and these are the nerves. Nerves carry electrical energy to all the parts of the body. And this red line right there is a sign of a tear. And when that disc bulges or herniate, can you see this is what a bulge or herniate is? It can put pressure on that nerve. Okay, can everybody see that right there? Well, what we want to do is create an environment that sucks that pressure off the nerve, that decompresses it. So this is pressure right there, the bulge and herniation. That could create pain, numbness, weakness. And then now we want to decompress that. Okay, we want to have that herniation get sucked back in. We want to create an environment so your body can heal and repair. And that is a very direct form of treatment for the disc. Okay, it's not a superficial, and there's lots of things to reduce pain. Drugs reduce pain, shots reduce pain, lasers reduce pain, and they all have their place, but they do not directly affect the disc. So we want to create a healing environment so when that disc heals, it's healed in a strong position. It will scar over. And yes, it will scar no matter what you do, but we want a strong, flexible scar. The next thing we do is we're going to improve alignment because the spine sits on the disc. And if these vertebrae are not sitting right, if they're shifted to one side or the other, you're gonna have abnormal load. So exercise is great, targeted exercise is great, core exercise is great. However, if you don't correct the structure first, it's like putting a big engine in a bread frame. So our model is we wanna correct the alignment so that when you do any exercise, you will benefit the most, okay? And we do adjustments, exercise, and traction. So typically the scenario is decompression first. As your pain is reduced, your movement, you can go back to doing things as your strength increased. And then we're gonna do targeted adjustment, exercise, traction. And we've helped thousands of patients. You can, uh, very simple, you can go to my website, 
You can go to my YouTube channel. You can see all the people that we've helped. You can listen to them. I have a case where I show the pre and post x-rays. There was a, where uh, the last pace, he was a weightlifter and hurt himself uh, sledding and how we decompressed the spine, non-surgically that is. We did targeted exercise, mirror image adjustment, mirror image traction, 100% recovery, full strength, and lasting recovery. Not just temporary relief, but long-lasting relief. So in order to get long-lasting relief, you have to make a structural correction. So lots of things can help you temporarily, but we want long-term relief, all right? So remember, the two modes of care we provide is one, spinal decompression, and yes, it feels good. When you're in agony, and I was in agony, uh, spinal decompression, many of our patients fall asleep while they get it done. All right, and then as you improve, we do uh, corrective chiropractic where we measure the spine, we do motion x-rays where you bend to see what areas of the spine are stiff, what areas are a little bit too loose, and then we apply the science of chiropractic biophysics using adjustments, exercise, and traction. So if this made sense to you, and you think this could help somebody, do me a favor, like it and share it, okay? And do me also another favor and let me know what you liked. Let me know what you're doing, okay? If you had spinal decompression, if so, what type? Were you face up, face down, on the side? Did you have corrective chiropractic? Or did you have what we call um, pain relief chiropractic where you do adjustments only? Um, have you had physical therapy? What type of physical therapy? Did you have surgery? How many surgeries? What type of surgery? Was it a fusion? So let me know what you, what you have done. Let me know your results and I will communicate back to you. Okay. Also, if you like some other exercises to help you get better and to relieve pain and stabilize your spine to avoid spinal surgery so that you too can live stronger longer, then please look up here, go ahead and Click the box and that will take you to some exercise available to help you.